Hi, everyone. It's great to see so many people here on the line with us. Um, we know that um, these are difficult times. We know that you're doing everything you can to help your small businesses. And one of the ways that you can help your small businesses is by continuing to keep your class offerings and going online. Um, so we are really um, thrilled that Joy Taylor, who's taught our Bringing Your Tea Online um, class in the fall, is able to join us today on a, you know, we, we discussed this, we discussed this on Monday, and we put it together for you all on Friday, in fact, um, uh, for, for today, in fact, we've also put together a class that I know Joy is going to talk about um, you know, we're responding to help you meet your needs as best as we can. So without further ado, let's bring on Joy Taylor, um, and she's going to talk to us um, about how to bring your TA online ASAP so you can go on tomorrow. Joy, I like that. Away. That's that's lingo, your TA online, which the rest of the world doesn't know what the heck that means, but we all know that technical assistance is what our clients need, probably now more than ever. And so I feel like what a blessing that I've been teaching online for over 20 years from colleges and economic development institutes. And specifically for two years, I was a director at the Women's Business Center at Jedi in Northern California. So I'm one of you. And I remember the first webinar I did in 2010 um, when I was moving from live stream to webinar and I was so nervous. But I will tell you from experience, it gets easier and easier over time. And now more people are used to it, you know, and now as a now, now everyone's becoming accustomed with these different platforms. So I'm happy you're here. We are going to talk about how you can reach and engage with your clients. And I'm hopefully going to continue to share the message. It's a little easier than you think. You can get better as you go. But the most important thing is there are entrepreneurs out there in California right now who are homebound, trying to figure out what to do to build their business, grow their business, and run their cash flows, financials, wherever they're at. And we can be here to help them. And we have the technology. And today, I'm hoping to give you some more skills. So it's skill building today. There will be time for Q&A and hopefully some confidence as well. So I wanna talk about the different types of TA and how to bring them online. We'll briefly talk about software options and solutions. Define the difference between webinars and meetings and when to use which. Today we're on a webinar. Helpful equipment, trainer prep checklist, engagement features, getting you comfortable with your host control panel because you will be the leader online and then time for Q&A. So obviously we can't cover everything you need to know to teach a program online today, but we can give you the basics. And then the good news is, gosh, Cameo, you guys had the forethought to raise the money like a year and a half ago, then to get the grant, work with me, and to create the Bring Your TA Online five-week course, which we did in the fall. And we're doing again starting April 2nd. So Heidi just put the Eventbrite registration in the chat. That five-week class is a series of two-hour per session courses taught in a Zoom meeting where you're going to actually, you're going to be in the driver's seat. We're going to do a lot of practice and a lot of conversation about the ins and outs of registration and tracking and reporting and teaching and, and how to make your classroom setting online really work for you and of course most importantly all of your clients. Heidi, um, we can talk more about it at the end. I just wanted people to know that today is just a taste and what I thought were the most important pieces of getting you up to speed right now before we do the five-week course that goes into everything from program design to registration to reporting. So quick orientation to Zoom. Um, this is a webinar. So really your participation, your options are to chat, to um, ask questions. And that's what I invite you to do. We're going to also have a poll and you'll be prompted when we do the two polls that we have. But down below in your participant panel, you see a little chat box. And I would love to invite each of you to type into the chat, make sure that your chat button 
says all panelists and attendees. And just uh, say your name and what center you're from. So let's do that as an experiment right now. And if you would like to, and we hope you do, just go ahead and chat your name and if you want the center that you're from. Great. Hi, Edwin, Lynn, Tu, Selena, Richard, John, Ingrid, Connie. Look at Renaissance, San Francisco, Cielo, CDFI, SBDC, SBDC. Oh, we got people from all over renaissance nice hi everyone chelsea yes you can also just type hi jenny gloria i couldn't get all your names because people are typing so quickly but i'm really happy you're here there's another women's business center of san diego all right another women's business center awesome well you guys are good good news that you are all um cameo members so i see that sharon miller raised her hand and sharon if you have a question and or if anyone has a question i encourage you to you can go to the q a box um or go to chat and just start with a q and put your question there and when we get to the end there'll be time for q a all right fantastic we did our chat. And by the way, that was an organized chat, meaning I invited you to chat. And I encourage you when you're doing webinars and meetings, utilize chat, but let people know that you want to use the chat for organized times when you ask for information and questions. What happens on webinars, and I bet you you've been on them, you're giving a presentation, right? Or you're actually participating because you want the presentation and there's a bunch of people talking to each other in the chat. It's called double tasking. It's really distracting. And it's even better when we use the chat as a organized time to connect and interact with each other. So that's what we're gonna model today. Okay, we are gonna do a poll because we wanna know who is here and what your experience is with teaching online. So what is your experience of training online? Check all that apply. I've taught online interactive group classes. I've done one-on-one -on -one coaching online. I've set up and hosted online webinars. I've participated as a speaker on a webinar, or I've been an active participant in an online group or coaching. I have very little experience online or other, and you can type that into chat. So getting a sense of who's with us today. How are we doing on the poll, Heidi? Let me unmute myself. We are um, doing good. We have ha almost half the people who have voted. So if we want to give it a, another second or two. An active, it looks like um, about 46 people, 46% have been an active participant in an online group or classes or coaching. So that means participated. 44% um, have little experience online. Um, only 19% of those people who have answered so far have taught classes online. 25% okay. um, have done some coaching and 18% have hosted online webinars. So, and 14% and as participated as speakers. So it looks like this class is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, this, this today will help you. And then if you have um, and can invest your time, I really recommend joining us for the five week program. I also notice in chat and it looks like there's, oh, there's the results, thank you. Um, Danielle created online programs, but not live. Yes, so a lot of people have done videos and recorded them and created what's called an evergreen course or a self-study program. And wonderful. We, um, we talk a little bit about that in the five-week program as well. All right, some people, no training. So let's do it. We can close the poll and... First thing I want to talk about is TA one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I'm going to get to software in a moment. There's lots of options, but this is, of course, the natural first step to meet with our clients on the phone or on a video conference platform. The wonderful thing is you can have a connection like eye to eye with the person 
but on the video conference platforms, you can also share a screen so that you or your client can pull up, for example, their business plan and literally work on it together. It's a productive way to work with clients. You could pull up an Excel cash flow projection. Maybe you're looking at their website together online. You're making changes. You're going through an email campaign. You're talking about labels or logos. You guys know what you do, but it's a beautiful visual way to really work with people you know, connecting person to person, but also sharing a screen and being able to really get into roll up your sleeves and work with them on things. So this is the first step. And, and if you're using the phone, I completely understand it. I hope after today you feel ready and have the confidence to just get yourself onto a video conference platform so that you can really maybe physically distance, but not socially distance with your clients, like have a little bit more of that visual connection and work on documents together. So it can be a lot of fun and yeah, it is the natural first step. The next step might be to take a course into the video conference arena or a group coaching program. So I believe now more than ever group coaching and accountability groups are a wonderful way, even masterminds for TA providers to get people together, business owners that have either similar industries or similar challenges and do some group coaching. You might not have the time or the resources to put together a class today, but you can put together an invitation to invite four or five or six people to meet with you weekly so they can interact, ask you questions, and learn from each other. So video conference is a great space for live multi-session courses or group coaching. Once again, interaction, connection, and you showing up to serve the people who are asking you know, questions of you right now at this time. Another option is to do a webinar series. We're doing a webinar today. Cameo has a webinar series. Um, some of you said you do webinars, you produce them. The Women's Business Center at JEDI, we've had a webinar series since 2010. And so we really like to utilize our webinars as a way to support people in real specific topics and then to post those on our YouTube channel so people can listen to them again or people can find them or we use them as a resource center for our clients. So that's another option. So individual TA, group coaching, online classes, and webinars are some of the options ahead of you in the years to come, right? Or in the months to come. A few things about video conference software. Uh, obviously, your center, uh, some of you, most of you nowadays have video conference, but what you're looking for is um, obviously within your budget, the finances is important. Choosing a software where you can learn it, it's going to be easy for participants, and it has engagement features. You want software that includes chat, which is what we did already today, screen sharing, which is what I'm doing now, sharing my PowerPoint, polls, which is what Heidi just did. Video viewing, which means, you know, everyone's face is on uh, the cameras and people are connecting. The ability to mute, to file transfer, something that's mobile friendly. And for us in the economic development realm, we really need the reporting features. So we need registered customization with our registration, evaluations. We need to keep track of attendance. Um, flexibility and storage and email reminders with our registration. These slides will be available to you. Um, I'll give them to you, Heidi, and you can post them on the website. And when you send the thank you for attending, we'll have all of this for you guys to use the slides as a handout. Having said all of that, um, in my research in the last few years, I, I really believe in Zoom. It's not the only option, but it's probably now become the leader. It was in 2019 and now in 220. It's really easy for people, your clients to use, and they're pretty comfortable with it. However, Cisco WebEx, GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, Intermedia, Webinar Ninja, and more. Most of the meeting platforms and the webinar platforms today have these same features. 
what I would recommend you do in choosing, and you might already have one and say, oh, I wish I had Zoom. Maybe not. Work with whatever software you have and make sure that you can work with your reporting and your registration in order to make the online environment easy so you have those virtual events with your clients. Uh, most programs have different options. The, um, centers are going to want pro or business accounts. You might have multiple users under the same account, but you want to definitely just kind of do your research if you haven't purchased the software yet. And my encouragement is um, just relax. This, this is like, this is the world and any software is going to get you started and it's okay to, tr to change. So if you have something already, use it. And not just use it, but block out time like this next week to go through the tutorials and the help center. So whatever software you're using, I've been so impressed with GoToMeeting and Zoom specifically in their ability to chat, have tutorials, have articles. And so when in doubt, you can search and you usually get a tutorial to answer your question. In addition, search Google, search YouTube. There's lots of people right now helping people get comfortable in the environment. So we all move into this uh, mindset now, this technology mindset where we get to train ourselves on how to utilize new software. All right. I want to move into my next bullet point, which is the difference between webinars and meetings. This is pretty standard in all the software. They're called webinars or meetings. Consider a webinar a virtual lecture hall. So we're in a lecture today and I'm showing you slides and we're getting some time for Q&A. It's going to happen through the chat. But for the most part, we're really presentation oriented in this webinar. A meeting looks like this. And most of you have been on meetings. These are ideal for the group coaching, the classes, those meetings and workshops that you used to do in your center or in person with your clients, those you want to move into the meeting environment, not the webinar environment. These are usually places where there's a lot more participation, a lot more interaction, a lot more Q&A. And so the difference between the webinar and the meeting, I want to go through it because I think it's really a key thing. You might be thinking at your center, oh my goodness, what do I do? I have a five-part class. It's a workshop class. I would highly recommend you move it to a meeting. Now, if you have an orientation to your center or a presentation that you usually are mostly lecture oriented, you probably want to move it to a webinar. Both allow you the option to screen share, show your slides, show your web browser, show a handout, show anything, a document. In a meeting, all participants are sharing their video or they can turn it off if they want, but you as the host and participant show their video in a webinar only like today, only Heidi and I can show our video unless we upgrade you in our host panel to a video view. So video sharing um, happens in meetings, not webinars. So what that means is in a meeting, you all today are viewing <laughs> view only participants. Whereas um, you today in this webinar are viewing only and in a meeting you'd be showing up. A little bit about capacity that has to do with your license. Another piece to consider is the participant list. When you're in a meeting, everyone knows who's in the meeting. In a webinar, only the host and panelists know who's in the webinar. So this is a great thing if people want to show up to a lecture or a presentation anonymously. You can invite them to chat their name, but they don't have to. So that's a big consideration and a difference between a meeting and a webinar. Now, this is from Zoom, by the way. It's not identical with all software, but it's relatively similar. And then email reminders are available with webinars. So you get the one week, one day, one hour before webinar reminder with meetings, you just get the registration for the meeting confirmation without a reminder. So that tends to be something you in-house remind people that you're doing a class, a group coaching, a meeting. Other things uh, both allow people to chat. Q&A only happens in the webinar. That's that Q&A box down below that you see. 
in meetings, in those classes and workshops, you can transfer files, which means you can like transfer handouts right during the presentation class. In a webinar, we don't have that for feature. Both can do live streaming. Registration, you make sure you have a paid account. And then, of course, that can happen with your customized registration in both meeting and webinar. Closed captioning, which is a great feature available in both, especially if you're going to be translating in a closed captioning. There's a tutorial on that in Zoom, by the way, if that's something you're interested in. Both enable you to record. Now, what I love about meetings is you can break people into breakout rooms. So if you're used to teaching in person, you know, likely you have people pair up and share something, or you might get people in a group of four to help fine tune their mission statements. That you can do in a meeting. And that's something we do a lot in our five week course, right, Heidi? <laughs> in fact, it was like one of the favorite yep. <laughs> <laughs> that we did. Um, so breakout yeah. rooms. Can I, can I? Oh, go ahead, finish. No, please make a comment. Oh, I, want, I want to say, yeah, breakout rooms are really fun. And I think our biggest, our biggest quote unquote complaint for Joy was that they weren't, they weren't long enough because <laughs> um, people really enjoyed talking to each other. Um, I did just want to mention there's a workaround around the file transfer. If you know how to upload um, documents to something in the cloud, you can send people a link in chat, which I will do at the end of the, I will do at the end of the, at some point when Joy. Yes, prompts. I will prompt you. We're just modeling all these workarounds because I have a handout for all of you. I'm excited to give you. Um, and then PayPal happens for webinars in our, you know, in our arena, because we have our 641s and 888s, um, we often have to kind of double register people. But that's something I cover in the five-week class. Um, you can customize registration in the webinar to capture some of those demographics, such as military and, and et cetera, um, that, hand, that is asked for us from the SBA. So when do you do a webinar? I think we pretty much covered it, you know, when it's a presentation. Um, it's also a great thing to do if you're introducing a program. So you give some content and then let people know there is a two month program or a three part series or something else to carry on. So you can do a webinar as a way to introduce people to something that becomes a bigger class or a group coaching program. Like you we're also, doing here. That's what we're doing here. My goodness gracious, gosh. We are, and we also might be creating a client resource because I'm assuming that Heidi, you're gonna post this webinar in the library at Cameo so people can watch it even if they weren't here live. And that's something else that you can do with webinars is record them, send them to everyone who registered and potentially also just post them on your website. Heidi says yes in chat, it's gonna go on the website as a resource. I recommend your webinars are less than an hour of presentation, interactive as much as possible, and then time for Q&A. So I wouldn't do a long two-hour presentation as a webinar, but I would do a two-hour class. Yeah, and if you're going to be using your webinar to invite people to what's next, or if you want let, to let people know more about your center, make sure that you include a what's coming next slide or slides in all of your webinar presentations. When do you do a meeting? You do a meeting when you want everyone on video, um, when there's a lot of participant participation, when you're gonna break out, when you're gonna transfer files, when you wanna create connection, when you want your participants to screen share. So something that often I've done with my TA clients is look at websites and have maybe four or five other participants in the class and we're all getting to look at a website from one of the participants. So meetings are workshops and courses and groups, webinars, the lecture hall. Okay, Heidi, you have another um, poll. And while you're, while you're launching the poll, is there a workaround to have reminders sent out for meetings? Chuck, yeah, the workaround is to take the registration list, download it as an Excel, and upload that into your email program, and send them a reminder in whatever email program you're using, whatever software you use. 
So once you close registration or a day before your meeting is going live, you would just get that list from your software, your meeting software, and download it, upload it, and send out a reminder with the link. So thanks for the question. Do you have a poll for us, uh, Heidi? I do, and it says attendees are now viewing the questions. So I'm not, maybe it just takes a second or two to um, kind of- Can someone pop. chat? Can someone chat if you see the poll? Just give us a yes. Don't see poll. Nope. Huh. Um, we'll do it later. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Nope. Huh. Okay. I don't okay. know why. That's all right. We're going to do it um, later. Yes, by the way, I and Heidi, we can be on video. We chose not to today. A couple of reasons. Zoom is getting super loaded. Video takes more um, bandwidth. So we're just being careful and cautious right now because so many people are using Zoom. And also it can minimize the actual screen share that you guys are seeing today. So this just lets you really fully see my slides. But yes, we can pop on to video and you've probably seen that before. Big time, um, another recommendation once you've chosen your software, block out some time, like I said, to go through the tutorials, but visit your account settings. So if you're using Zoom, you can see on the left banner I, in blue, it says account settings. And then in the upper ribbon there, the blue says meetings. This is how you can go into your meetings and you, these are meetings, not webinars, but there's one for webinars too. But in your meetings, you can make a lot of choices about if people need a passcode, if people can screen share, if you're going to let people, the participants save chat, if you want their videos on when they arrive and so on. So this takes a little bit of time, but it's right now in the default setting that most people would want and use, but you might wanna go through it and see if you want to change those settings. So um, two things on your list. Well, three, pick your software if you don't have it, go through tutorials, and then check your account settings. Now you're ready to go online, at least one-on-one -on -one TA. Um, if you're concerned about teaching classes or doing webinars and being on video and having good sound and audio quality and camera quality, I have some recommendations. If you don't, of course, if you don't have a video camera, buy that extender ASIP and get that on your computer. I know most of you are working from home. So um, make sure that you have your video camera working. And then also, you may want to get something to enhance your microphone if it is not audible and you can just ask your participants how they hear you. Um, I really like the Yeti Blue microphone. There are other options, but in my research, I mean, podcasters use this. It's around $100, $120. It's kind of a standard in the industry. Uh, do read the instruction manuals because there's ways to work it so it gets the best quality and doesn't get the sound in the entire room but picks up you. And then be cautious of lighting. I personally have a little U-ring, like what you see there on the left, that I use to highlight my face when I'm in a meeting. I make sure that I have the right back lighting and not too much front lighting. And here's a photo I took of one of my clients because she had, guess what, in front of her, a window. So if you notice on the picture in the right, she's got a window in front of her. If you notice the picture on the left, you'll see that my blinds are down in front of me so that I have better, um, better viewing. Okay. And then prepare yourself. Um, going online in a, in a course classroom where your video is on, good idea to, of course, it's like going to work, right? You're going to just look the part. We're not working from home in our pajamas. So feel comfortable in your appearance. It's a little different too, because there's like um, a lot of talking and you might do this before you teach in person too, but I recommend some vocal warmups, your energy warm up, me meaning that you give yourself time to prepare to be present in a classroom, have your warm tea and other things like that. And then expect the unexpected because the big question mark is technology and what might happen. 
And it's for that reason that I do have the handout, Heidi, that would be now's a good time if you want to put that in the chat, a link to the handout. I created a trainer prep checklist for you that gives you some ideas of what to do to prepare yourself to teach a course online. And I'm talking about like the half hour before you go live, including things like having a timekeeping advice if you're going to be walking people through exercises where they're actually writing things down for a minute or two and you want to keep track of your time, having water or tea or something for you, having all your notes and agenda with you right next to your computer, any show and tell tools that you would have in an in-person classroom, you have them right next to you. You have a writing pad. You're probably going to be taking notes as you're teaching. I recommend a candle or flowers, or you probably do that in person sometimes too, but really set your intention. And then run a speed test. Make sure your internet is working and, and plug yourself in with a hard wire. I do not recommend Wi-Fi when you are the host. If you can get yourself hardwired, I highly, highly recommend it. Prepare your desktop. So clear out the alerts and notifications. Clean your desktop and have all the slides and the documents in the browsers that you need open. So that when you're ready to teach, you've got your URLs, everything you're going to screen share is ready for you. So it's easy to make those transitions that you'll be making when you teach. Um, okay, I'm gonna check before we go on. Lynn says, if you are teaching an interactive course on Zoom, is there a suggested class size? Great question really depends on what you're teaching. It depends on how much group participant sharing you plan to have and your experience. If it's your first online class, I would, I would go for maybe eight, 12 max. It can be a little overwhelming to manage everyone the first time. And having said that, I have participated or been hosting and teaching in online classes, meetings, workshops that have a hundred. You can have 49 images on the screen at a time and, and scroll and there'll be another screen of people. So you can do the larger meetings and you can mute everyone at the same time. But is that going to create the best results for your participants? So it's almost like when doing a class, I know for us, our flagship course at the Women's Business Center, It's Your Business, we capped it at 24 because that's where we found that people, we could do the breakouts, we could do the participant sharing in the classroom and, and we had enough interaction that everyone felt united and not lost in the material. So great question, Lynn, thank you for asking. And we'll do more questions at Q&A time. This is what it looks like if you're a host. Once again, there's lots of articles and tutorials on how to be a host, but you can see on the left that you can mute and unmute yourself. Um, there's an invite button to send emails to people who aren't showing up. You can manage all the participants, which opens up a window and lets you mute and unmute people. You can do the polling, you can share your screen, you can look at the chat, you can record, and you can send people out to breakout rooms. And depending on your account settings, there's closed caption and other things that might show up on your host panel. I know this is something many of you have done, but for those of you who are new, this is what it looks like in Zoom, and it looks different on different platforms. And here's a little example of when you are teaching, if you, if you hover over your participants' little green, blue dots, um, you'll see that a little window will pop open and you can mute people and pin videos and make people co-hosts. Um, you can remove people from your room. So those are the features that you can also utilize when you're meeting a client one-on-one -on -one or in a large group and also do some different fun things for your own view, including hiding yourself if you want. A webinar panel looks a little different and it looks a little different. You'll see the broadcast button, you'll see the Q&A box, 
you'll see um, this pen here where you can circle things. You will not see the breakout room. So there's slight differentiations, but this host panel, it's like um, consider taking it for a test drive, right? It's kind of like sitting in a new car and getting to know all the features in the dashboard. This is what helps you run your webinar or your meeting. In one of the slides, you saw something that says have a co-host, which is another big takeaway I hope you get from today. Don't think you have to do this alone. You can invite someone else to join you as a co-host. You see how Heidi and I are working together today. So she's right here with me looking at chat, um, responding to chat, running polls, doing the recording. And that's the kind of thing you probably want to do the first time that you do a, a class um, on, on the platform that you choose. And, you know, these intricacies, I just wanted you to see there's some difference, but you can see um, you can go live on Facebook and YouTube also when you're, when you're doing your webinars and your meetings. Okay, well, we're rolling along. Where are we at? Good. We've, um, we've got at least another 20 minutes. So I hope you're all getting some benefit from this. We will be asking questions. But the other thing I thought was really important for me to share with you today, in addition to just a bit of an orientation on teaching online, is inviting you to grow into more engagement. So as we're moving forward in the next year, and likely this is a trend, and you know we know right now it's an immediate emergency, but it's ongoing. We will be teaching more in the virtual space. So how do we build community? How do we create that networking that happens in our in-person events? How do we engage people? And believe it or not, it can happen online. So here are a couple of my recommendations. As you're teaching, and you probably do this in person, so do it online. Let's say you're working on value statements for their business, and you've gone through the lecture aspect, and you've given them an example of some values and why they're important, and then you want them to draft their value statement. So invite the participants online. I call it a countdown activity. Tell them that they're going to have two minutes to draft their first draft values statements and push a timer and, and let them start getting to work right there in the virtual space. You can say one minute, let them know where you're at, 10 seconds, Do -do 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 -do. the timer goes off, great. So now you have a first draft. Now we're gonna have you break out into groups of two. And in that situation, you can, if you're in a meeting, you can have people move into their smaller groups to share. So sometimes you share, sometimes you don't in the small groups. But the important part of this slide is it, it's, it's, it's like those people that you're connecting with, they are there. It's not that we're talking to a camera. You're all here today. Your participants are there. And we want to remember that we're not alone in our offices or homes. We're actually connecting with people. So most everything that we did in the in-person event, we can do in the online event. And I actually encourage even more of that interaction because it's easier for people who are watching a webinar to get distracted or in an online class to get distracted when they're just in front of their computer as opposed to being in a classroom. So I include a lot of engagement features and we cover that in the five-week class. So using chats and polls like we are today, having time for participants in a classroom meeting to share. And when you're doing that on a, on a platform like this, you will be calling on people. We can't go around in a circle and have everyone share or go through the rows of the tables in the lecture room because we don't know who's first, second, third, and fourth because we have random screens up on our computer, right? So uh, the big difference is you really wanna make sure you call on people and have them mute and unmute, or you can mute and unmute them, and they have an opportunity to share. And it could be as simple as the 30 second introductions for the first night class, or you give people homework and everyone comes back with, with a one minute report or a win. Or I love to, at the end of my um, courses, I really like to ask people to share a sentence. What did you learn today? What was one big lesson or takeaway? Or what's a commitment you're making 
to a next step in your business because of today's class. And that's a participant share. And then we've already talked about breakout rooms. Oh, and people love handouts. So doing a file transfer, doing what Heidi just did, sending people that link, anything that you can do to give people a handout before or during the class, if you can do it before, then people can bring the worksheet or the handout and you can refer to it as you're teaching, which people really like having a worksheet. I've pulled a lot of uh, attendees and people like the worksheets. Make sure you're recording so people who register and can't attend can watch the recording. And consider in your multi-session courses having a discussion board either through your website or a private Facebook group so you have some places for people to network and connect outside of the class. You know, it's really going to be an era of learning by doing because right now uh, the world is asking of us as TA providers to help a lot of confused and overwhelmed, overwhelmed business owners. Um, there are, and I know you guys are the first to know, a lot of people who just really don't know what to do right now. So we've got a great opportunity to keep the momentum of our centers going and to even keep those numbers up in our grants and our from our funders. We've made promises. And while we might be pivoting from in-person to online, we can accomplish our mission. We can help everyone succeed, find solutions, and of course, also give people a little hope and encouragement moving forward. So I wanted to leave a little time for Q&A. I know I covered a lot. I'm curious, Heidi, if you want to try to launch that poll again, we can try it one more time. And then I'd like to um, just open it up for um, questions and answers. And then maybe we'll go back and, and get it. There, it worked. The poll is up. What do you consider your biggest challenge to online learning? I did exactly what I did before. So I don't know if just Zoom is, uh, Zoom's got a little bug in it or pretty active. You know, I think we should just blame it on Zoom right Let's now. Let's just blame it on Zoom. Yeah, um, I, Go yeah, ahead. Well, people, I want to make a comment on the recording and um, a suggestion just as a best practice for people is that they, there's an auto record, at least on Zoom. I'm guessing that there is on other places. Um, and uh, I suggest you use that. And a lot of times you, you launch the record, the recording will, you know, go up and it'll, there'll be, you know, the 15 minutes beforehand will get recorded that you need to chop off. But I recommend doing that rather than um, forgetting to record. <laughs> Cause that's what I did last the other day. So it does happen. We all make mistakes and you'll do it once. You won't do it again. <laughs> well, but, that's something we've learned. Once we've done it once, we won't do it again. That's for right, sure. Right. Yeah. Right. I have I, about, I, go 50, ahead. I have about 52% of the people who voted. Should I end the polling or give people? Sure, let's chance? see what, we'll see what the results are. All right. Let's see. I'm going to share the results. And so there we go. Um, you should now see the results. Um, about uh, two thirds of 60% of you want to better engage your participants. And it, by doing so, I really highly recommend you um, take Joy's class. Um, she really does a great job of showing how you can be more professional, how you can really engage your, your clients. I think the um, testimonials we got from the class were really, really, really great. Um, I see someone is saying um, that they don't see the results. Um, let yeah. me stop. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't, you're not. So I'll, t I'll, I'll just tell you the results then. 60% want to better engage participants. Um, more professional in my presentation was 20%. Not under people seem comfortable with the technology for the most part. There's just eight percent um, uh, didn't understand the technology, um, but about half wanted um, more confidence with the online tools. So that's definitely something you'll get from the class. Um, 
and cost of going online. Um, Cameo can try and help with that. Um, if um, if I, I have a little poll that I'm going to take, um, you don't need much cost um, for one host. It's fifteen dollars a month. Um, we can, if you're interested in getting some help with that. Um, we can see what we can do about that. Um, so I'm gonna put a little poll, a little link to a poll I just created to see if um, you need access to Zoom because Cameo has it. The other piece of technology you might need is a camera. If you don't have a camera on your computer, you definitely wanna do this in video. So that, that question will ask you that. We're just trying to get a sense of what people are ne need. So cost, um, let's let's try and um, not let cost be a factor. Um, we've also heard from funders if um, if you need something and if it's access to technology that you need, ask them for it. So um, and then other people said um, the results. Um, I'm not sure what the other was that a um, couple people said, but what why they um, um, what their biggest challenge was. So. Um, if there is a challenge that I didn't list and that you want to share with um, privately with Cameo or with me or with Joy, um, let's see if we can um, address these challenges and um, not make them challenges anymore. Great. Yeah. And just, to okay. the, you know, I just want to speak uh, to the confidence part. That was a big piece of really Heidi, when you and I sat down and talked about even creating this class and then offering it the first time last fall is the confidence come in, comes in and the empowerment is just getting such an overview over five weeks of everything. But also I make the participants co host So you as a participant will be leading polls. You'll be leading participant shares. You'll be, even if you want, you can lead a breakout where you're the one who divides us into the rooms. So I love that we're doing this. I think it's so awesome that Cameo is offering it. So I'm glad people will be joining us again. And I've got some questions that have come in. So I'm going to go to the questions and yeah. then I want to get the takeaways. Um, Eddie says webinars seem to be quite a bit more expensive they are um, than meetings. Is it recommended that we use meeting for webinar in lieu of webinar? What will be the challenges? You absolutely could. When you use a meeting for a more of a lecture type presentation, you're going to be doing a screen share like I am today. Um, you will also have a little bit of a distraction of more videos also showing on the sidebar, but there are ways to like turn everyone's cameras off. So it's, it's a doable option. And then you'd want to just go back through that chart and see the pluses and minuses of each. You'll want to remind people that they registered, but you can, if, if you're looking at financial, um, options and all you and your center can afford right now is meeting don't let that stop you <laughs> by all means just i would call it like a master class maybe instead of a webinar let people know that their video they have the option to have their video on or off and let them know that they will be joining and their name will be part of the participant list so those are some of my comments on that um, we have a technical thing going on. We can't show our videos today. Normally on webinar you can, Chuck, but today we can't. So we're not putting our video on. And it's probably has to do with an account setting um, that happened on the software. So normally a small picture of myself and Heidi could come up on the screen. And I could also stop sharing my slides and you would just, all you would see is my picture. So. Thanks for asking. And if you go to Cameo's, um, Heidi, you have a bunch of webinars on the Cameo site, past webinars, right? That are recorded. We do. Yeah, so go to that page and just take a look at some of the last webinars and you'll probably see the images of the presenter plus their slides at the same time. And that'll, you can watch one of those to get a feel for it. Okay, what else is coming in in chat, Heidi? Let's see. Um, I'm really enjoying your ability to handle the technical glitches. What a great way to model your messages. Yeah, you know, things will happen. <laughs> and I actually, one of my first slides when, when you take the five-week class, if you do it, it says, have the courage to make mistakes. 
and just know you probably will, whether it's stuttering or something will break down in technology, just roll with it. And, and as I said, we all get better as we go. All right. So Google Docs link isn't working. Heidi's working on that. What other questions do you all have? Any specific questions about webinars, meetings, next steps, engagement tools? I think, I think since I'm not seeing questions right this moment, I am going to encourage everyone in the chat, what is one thing you learned that you are going to apply in today's webinar? So in the chat, if you want to type one thing you learned, and we can just see what we're all making commitments to, what we've learned. Learning by doing, I love it. Meeting through Zoom and maybe webinar later. Great, good, nice to hear that. Meetings versus webinars using polls, fantastic. What else did you learn? Check your account settings, how to keep people engaged, using Zoom in general, fantastic. All right, meetings versus webinars. Well, thank you for sharing. I, I have one more question that came in and, and then we're pretty close to the hour. So it, did you, Joy, did you address the question about the disclosure stuff? Can you run that one by me? Do we need to ask for a disclosure or add a disclosure for permission that we will be using an online format if we're recording? That, if you, uh, so the only thing that I post publicly that is recorded are webinars where it's anonymous who's on it. Um, I think that's a good question that we should do more further research. I tend to always, um, I would say, yes, be clear. I don't know if it's a signed agreement, but I would absolutely let people know in your courses, this is being recorded and it's going to be shared privately um, in an online portal or in a private link only to participants of the class. So when I'm teaching a multi-session class or a workshop or group coaching and I'm recording, it only goes to participants. And that is something that is clearly stated. And a best practice would be to also clearly have it written. And I think I'm guessing we're gonna be getting more from the SBA, more from the WBCs and SBDCs that are gonna be giving us some of those templates and, and letting us know what is, federally funded organizations and programs do need to post. Heidi, do you have more to add to that or anyone else who's on the on the call today? No. Okay. Um, there's a couple of technical things about Zoom. You can, I'm guessing you can find them on the Zoom um, website. How do we access the attendance list on Zoom? Um, how, what does it mean to ha have 50 hosts? We can give each of our consultants their own sign in. Yes, that's true. Um, you could do them at the same time. So you need to, you can um, ask that of Zoom. Um, and the other one was, how are you getting tools like spreadsheets or templates to your attendees? Do you have a shared drive? You could use Google Drive. That's a free tool that is accessible by everyone. And by the way, I am still, am still trying to make that public. I thought I did. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going question, on with my John. Google form. Yeah, I want to respond to that from John. A Google Drive, a Dropbox, through email attachments, or if you're in a meeting, you can do a file transfer. We're in a webinar, so we didn't do it today, but in a meeting, I could literally put a file in the chat area and send it to everyone who's present. Um, Eddie says, will poll show the participants information so we can use it as a quiz? That's a great question, Eddie. When you set up the poll, you can choose to have it be anonymous or not. We use polls anonymously I'll say I use them anonymously when I might be asking something tender, like what's your biggest challenge in the online environment? 
But I also use pools as evaluations. Of course, our funders need evaluations. And the fastest way to get an evaluation is to do a poll. And in that case, it's not anonymous because I will be asking people to like give feedback about how they're going to use the information from the class, et cetera. So thank you. And then you mentioned that the system might be glitchy because of the number of people using Zoom and the software. Are you concerned? I'm not, but I but there's some measures that I'm aware of that I'm personally taking. And one is that I record to my own computer, not the Zoom cloud. I did a webinar on Monday at noon and I didn't get the recording until Wednesday night, Wednesday evening, because it I believe it was just too crowded in the Zoom servers. But there's been no glitch, like today was fine, there was no glitch. I am guessing that Zoom is on it, as is GoToMeeting, WebEx, and everyone finding more storage, finding more servers, so I think we'll be okay. I also think there's grace. Everyone knows we're in a massive um, crisis and opportunity here. So if there's glitches, there's gonna be a little more grace and forgiveness than ever before. It's a good question. Thanks, Lynn. And then Danny's got a resource in chat. I can't recommend this resource enough for teachers, virtual or not. Thank you. I will also pull that one up. So I appreciate you sending it to us. Training from the back, um, room, back of the room. Okay. Thank you so much, Danny. I saw other people giving some um, feedback, the value of meeting over webinars, love learning about breakout sessions, wonderful formats to hold meetings. And Renee said, I've been allowing clients to record on their own. That's right. So if you're doing one-on-one -on -one TA, thanks Renee, you can make your um, client a co-host, which gives them the option to record the session and they can record it on their computer and then they have the recording of the session to review for themselves. That is a great way to do it. Heidi, we're pretty close to the hour. What, what did I miss in the chat? Anything? Um, I don't think so. Um, Danny, is it, I'm going to put that resource um, onto the email. We'll send all the links and everything um, to everybody in an email as well as the handout. Um, we wish you all the luck. If there's something else we can do for you, let us know. Um, uh, I, you know, this is, these are unprecedented times and we're going to all do what we can to serve our clients and our, for, for serving our clients for Cameo, it's you, you all. Um, we hope you found this valuable. Um, we hope uh, some of you sign up for the class and I want to thank you and I hope everybody has a weekend. I know it's been a hard week. Um, for a lot of people and just remember to breathe, <laughs> right? <laughs> We're all breathing. We're all breathing. There's a lot to learn. Take your time and we'll each one step at a time get better. So yeah, thanks for the service everyone's doing and thank you, Heidi. Thanks everyone. I am going to end the meeting now. Take care. Have a good weekend. All right. Thank you.